Hi, my name is Tommy Kelly. So guys, welcome back to another video and I'll keep turboing on as your host here, TTT, to Tommy, no it's Tofu, Turbo, Tommy, <laughs> need to get that right, I, I keep getting this mixed up, right, anyway, right, I I'm on this, don't worry, just bear with me, right, as I say, today I'm actually going to be talking about recovery and eating disorders and actually doing exercise, like I say, Basically, like I say, it's going to come to no surprise to you that everybody has the right to actually do exercise and love exercise, whether that be anything you love doing, whether that be running, swimming, doing exercise in the gym, whether that be weightlifting, calisthenics, uh, bodyweight exercises, anything that you love doing, like I say, as long as you're happy and you're doing it for the right reasons, you should keep doing it and you're doing it for the healthy reasons and doing it for the love of the exercise. But let's say for some people, things can obviously get really, really complicated. Let's say people with disordered eating and exercise, let's say have a, not, a history of eating disorders or disordered eating, the dangers of exercise are both physical and psychological as well. Let's say if your body is already weakened from fasting or best insufficient nutrition basically, it obviously won't be able to handle the, the strain of exercise on your body. Let's say even if you've been in recovery for years, there's a psychological and physiological risk actually to getting into a workout routine. Exercising, like I say, means paying attention to your body in a way that you can quickly turn critical and competitive. Like I say, just walking into a gym and seeing mirrors can obviously trigger basically competition between your body image and obviously other people as well. I say that that's true even for people with eating disorders, but for those who have dealt with them, it's especially a big, big risk. So I say eating disorders are very, very sneaky. Like I say, they hide out. You, you may, you might not be saying, "Oh, I just want to get fat," but you really, you really have this hidden compensatory relationship with exercise. Like I say, working out basically gives you permission to eat a certain way. That's the way you, your eating disorder thinks. Again, this isn't something that's obviously limited to people that have been diagnosed with an eating disorder in the past. Let's like say, how often have you probably said this, or you've heard that someone say, oh, I worked out today, I earned this, talking about that, whatever that be, that piece of chocolate or that piece of pizza, things like that. I like say, the things that I really say that you should do it, and I've written down a lot of bullet points here, for dealing with this kind of situation and making sure that when, if you do get into an exercise routine that it doesn't latch on to it because like I say exercise athletica is something that I suffered with in the past is very very real and your eating disorder will sla latch on to anything that it can do it will make you think oh I want to exercise for the right reasons and then suddenly you're going to the gym when you're feeling really really ill and that is the first sign that you're suffering from this because you should never really be doing exercise for the, the, the feeling that you need to do it. You should be doing it for the, the love of the exercise and doing it in a healthy way. And when it comes to the point that it's taking over your life and you're missing out things like time with family and friends, you're going to the gym at odd hours, you're, you're missing, you're, like you're coming straight for your work and, and going to the gym, you're doing it first thing in the morning, you're feeling you're needing to do it. That is when it's getting into a habit. So like I say, number one is to get support. Like I say, meet, meet with, at the very least, an eating disorder specialist before hitting the gym to determine whether you're in a good place mentally. mentally. Also smart, it's also very, very smart, like I say, get a physical to obviously ensure that you're, you're healthy and appropriate weight and do blood work to make sure your body can obviously handle the exercise. So you basically want to go to your doctor and things like that and they can give you a full medical and make sure that your bones, your heart, all your bloods are at a proper, proper place for you to actually be able to undertake exercise because the last thing, especially when eating disorder recovery, your heart is a muscle, it can have shrunk quite a lot and the last thing you want to be doing is over undertaking exercise and it can be very, very detrimental and it can actually cost you your life. So number two is to figure out the food. Like I say, exercising means you're burning more calories, which means you need to eat more to actually ensure that you stay at a healthy weight. 
But I say, but tracking your meals or calories, even if it's just to actually figure out how much more you need to eat, can obviously be very, very triggering for eating disorder sufferers. It can become too compulsive. So like I say, suggesting working with a nutritionist to obviously develop in a, a plan, whether that be, if you're, if you're vegan, obviously you work with a vegan nutritionist, whether you're an omnivore, you, you work with somebody that does normal nutrition plans, whatever it be that, that your lifestyle is, just basically focusing upon somebody that can get you the proper nutrition that your body needs to sustain that exercise and to help you reach your goals. So number three is to start slow. Like I say the type of workout you want to do matters a lot. Like I say solitary enduring sports like long distance running can be very very triggering to people with eating disorders because of the extremely high energy it needs combined with the false perception that fitness improves performance and obviously the, the solitary nature of the activity. So like I say strength, strength tra training I would say is a lot lot safer. But more serious bodybuilders often implement super strict food plans and seriously emphasise that physical outcome getting ripped and things like that. So they may do things like cutting out carbs and such and such, which is, you, if you're in eating disorder recovery, you need protein, fats and carbs. You need protein for obviously muscle growth repair. You need your fats for obviously soluble vitamins A, D, A and K for hormonal function, brain function. You need all those things, like I say, carbohydrates are what you need to actually sustain your exercise. That They're actually what your brain runs upon. Carbohydrates are glucose, you need a lot of that. So like I say, yoga and other similar grounding, stabilising forms of exercise are probably the best, I would say, especially when you're first beginning to get into a, a fitness routine. So like I say, it's possible to do anything safely, she said, but basically, you want to be doing things that's monitored, like I say, everything can be done safely, but you want to be doing it with, with somebody, especially if you're doing, like, like I say, long endurance things or weights in the gym, you want to be working with a fitness professional that can oversee that and do it in a safely manner. Don't go in there yourself and think you can do this yourself, because that's probably the worst thing you can do, and it'll probably set you back a lot. So number four, I would say, is to limit yourself. You should never be exercising for more than 45 minutes to an hour at a time. Basically, when you're starting out, I say go for less. All you really need is, for fitness is basically five or six minutes, which is actually amazing. Like I say, you can do all these fitness programs that last, five, let's say, five minutes, and they're as, probably as beneficial as you can. When you're starting out, what you want to be doing is get in there, do your exercise, get back out and feed your body the nutrition it needs. The very, very least that you can do in the gym is all the better for yourself. So I would say as well, feeling guilty if you miss a workout, becoming over rigid about your gym plans, like refusing to skip a run if it's raining or you're not feeling well. Let's say modifying your diet based on your exercise. If you didn't work out today, you can't eat such and such X, Y, and Z. Let's say comparing your body to other people's, exercising for longer and longer periods at a time, and rationalising it in a way. Frequent injuries like pulled muscles, stress fractures, they're all signs that you need to step back and meet with your therapist. Your gym habit basically is getting out in a con control and that's the kind of things you want to be looking upon if they start creeping in. So I hope you like this guys. Let me know in the comments below. I'll do a lot more for you. Like I say, I'm a personal trainer myself. I know a lot about fitness and exercise. I've suffered with exercise athletica in the past so I've got a wide scope and range I can help you with on that. So please let me know in the comments below if you would like any more. Please like, share and subscribe this video, share this about social media for me, I would really really appreciate that and remember until the next time keep turboing on and remember what the little guy at the end of the video says he knows very very best and have an awesome awesome day guys I love you so so much. Remember guys binge on life, purge negativity and starve guilty feelings. Speak to you all soon and love you so much.